for all of your studio needs. Look no farther than Fort Pierce's premier spot for mixing, mastering, and recording. Audio Nerds, proud sponsor of Culture Society's Up the Road. Call 772-834-5864. On another bus ride going back to prison. I've been thugging since a young and in and out the system. Yeah, my mama tried to warn me, but I didn't listen. Head up, ten down, that's just how I'm living. On another bus ride going back to prison. I've been thugging since a young and in and out the system. Yeah, my mama tried to warn me, but I didn't listen. Head up, ten down, that's just how I'm living. Go ahead and introduce yourself and tell the people where you're from. My name is Brian Senna. And I'm from Okeechobee, Florida. Okay. So before we get started, can you tell us how much time all together you've done? About 10 years. Okay. So can you tell us the charges and at what age you started getting in trouble? Um, sales charges or drugs, possession charges, running from the police, um, driving. Not a license, stuff like that. At what age would you say you started getting in trouble? About 15. What were those charges? Drug charges. What kind of drugs were we dealing with at 15? Ecstasy, acid, weed, cocaine, marijuana, everything. All right, so what happened when you caught those first charges at 15? Uh, well, they just let me go and go back to my parents. After the first couple of times, then that third time I had to do um, probation. Okay, so I you said you did about 10 years. Was that, how many sentences was those 10 years? Uh, probably about five or six different sentences, three of them prison, the rest county jail. Just mainly, um, mainly prison though. Mainly about eight years in prison, I'd, be, I'd say two years county, off and on. And so tell us about your first time getting arrested on charges that got you sent up the road to prison. Um, okay, well, I was just, you know, out there hustling, getting money, trying to be the man. Somebody, you know, got in trouble evidently, you know, wore a wire on me, and I got caught up. Sell charges. She said two different cases and that, that one. But, uh, they ran them together and gave me three years for it. It was for selling um, pills, pain pills, allegedly. So, uh, that sentence went down. But prior to that, I had, you know, done county jail for the possessions and stuff, a year, a year, a year there. Um, but, you know, mainly, um, it was for uh, drugs, and in, in which you know, prison there is a lot of drugs. Anyway, so the person that was wearing the wiretap, yeah, was that something you would expect from that person? Actually, yes, it is, and you know, they say it's not the person that you least expect. If it, it, it's the person you least expect, well, it's not the person you least expect. It's the person you suspect, but you're still dealing with. And in the back of your mind, you know you shouldn't be messing with this person. You done heard something or you've seen something funny go on. So now, when you get caught up, you know you, already, you, know you should. So if you get that feeling about somebody, just cut them off totally. Don't even mess with them. It does. Nine times out of ten, they work it. You said he wore a wire, so did you get picked up right away, or did they let you go home first? How did that transaction? No, apparently it happened. They were wearing an investigation for three months. Watched me. Watched what I did, my daily routine, trying to uh, just see what I, where probably what my supplier was after they realized what, you know what I'm saying? I guess that I, what I, the nature of my crime they want to know what I'm doing, who I'm getting my shit from, you know what I'm saying? So they watched me for three months, got enough evidence on me, I guess, and just came and picked me up. 
three months later after the alleged sale. Right, so walk us through that, that when they come pick you up. What's uh, that like? I just come home. I remember I was out of town working. I had just got home, went in the house, took a shower, got out, kicked back, just starting relaxing. Me and my cousin, uh, he's over there. I hear a knock on the door. Do, 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 do. But look, he's like, cops here. I'm like, oh, really? All right. So it's my house, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, cops show up at your house, what you do, you get up, you go out there, go to the door, see what they want, you know what I'm saying? I'm not thinking they're gonna cuff me up and arrest me right there. So I go to the door from the other city. He rides in, I say, yes sir, he say, turn around, put your hands up. I say, yes sir. Boom, boom, put me in cuffs, say, what's this about? He says, narcotics says, uh, hold on you. Oh, well, you know, gotta take you in, you see the uh, narcotics officer when you get there. Okay, so what's going through your mind at this time? I'm thinking, man, I got, I'm, a, I'm thinking I probably got sale charges because of what was going down at the time with a lot of people getting busted and stuff. Um, and I, may, I, I had made it a long time without getting, getting caught. And at this point, I was on a good like five year run without getting in, in trouble. Oh, you know what I mean? But I was doing my thing at the same time. You know, but fuck it, dog. It's, it's, it's the, not a good life in the, in, in the long run. Um, you know, they say we have fun as kids, but you gotta get out of it one day. You know what I'm saying? And continue on doing it. Up until your forties and fifties, you know, you gotta do some time. All your charges and your cases are in Florida. Yeah. Okay. So take us. Well, you said you've been in county already. So was going up the road to prison as scary as it would be to the normal person going up the road for the first time? It could be, but um, me, when I first went, I was thirty years old. My first time going to prison. And I had already known and heard everything about it from family members and uh, friends going out there to school, you know what I'm saying? And say, hey, hey man, this is what it's gonna be like your first day. You gotta do this, do that. You buy by these rules, do this, and you'll make it through. And just pay attention, right? mind your own business, you know what I'm saying? And just you skate, you skate through. But if you, you know, you are just, a dummy, you know, you can get into some stuff. Can you tell me the um the feeling you felt and where your head was at when you it was time to leave when they telling you to pack up? It's time to take that ride. Man, that was nice. Just about about three weeks ago, I guess. Um, I just got out. I was down in South Florida, Miami. When I came out, I had to no, take no, no, time out. You talking about when you coming out of jail this time? I'm talking about the first time you going to prison from county. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. That ride. Yeah, tell me well, what's on uh, your mind and how you feeling at that time because this is the first time I, you get on the ride. I don't see people get up, going to prison, and go up, going out the door and puke in the trash can because you got butterflies in your stomach. You're nervous. You don't know what to expect, and. uh you ready to get it over with, but at the same time, you know, you're kind of nervous. You just, from what, everything that you hear about it, you know what I'm saying? You got to get butt booty naked when you get there. You can strip, strip you when you get off the bus, you know? It's like... Did you see anybody refuse to get naked? No. <laughs> <laughs> so when we get there, where do we go? Where, what reception center did you head to the first time? Orlando. So tell us about your touchdown when you get there. Touchdown, Orlando. Get off. There's all kinds of vans and buses there from other counties, Hillsboro and um, Orange County, uh, you know, Highlands. All different county vans are all there. And you see the different inmates. You get into a Sally Port, long fence. Everybody lined up on that fence. And they tell you 
just they come and take all your you're shackled up. They come and take your shackles off and you gotta strip down and you gotta go through a quick um, search process where they want you to bend, squat and cough, look in your ears and your mouth and everything. And then eventually a little another inmate will come and bring you a pair of boxers, throw them all at you. And you gotta be standing there with your hands behind your back, you know. You don't talk and you speak up, yes sir, no sir, you know what I'm saying? That's it, and you don't be talking to nobody. Yeah, so when we touch this compound, are you affiliated with anything? No, sir. No. Nope. Okay, so at this time, are you using any drugs as well as selling them? Yeah. What kind of drugs were we on when we went up the road? Tumshi, K2, Spice. Well, I mean, what it's called? you at home, not in, up the road in prison. Oh, before, at home? Yeah, before we go before up I, the road. Before I go? Oh. Mm, everything. Everything, meth, pills, weed, coke, alcohol, you know what I'm saying? Everything. Main, mainly those probably pill, pills, you know what I'm saying, at that time. And that's what I was selling allegedly was pain pills. Roxy's, blues, uh, gelatos, you know, things of that nature, the opioids. Was those things hard to find when you was in the reception center? Uh, those was, yes. Mm. So you had to wait. Uh, did you even dabble while you was on the inside? Uh, not with the pills, no. But there was other things there that, yeah, I might indulge in certain times, uh, holidays, and uh, just maybe I get feeling like that, man. I mean, I'm in prison, man. Screw it, man. You know what I'm saying? I will hang out, have a good time, and I, that's the main thing, the big thing there, man, drugs, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, I'm a drug addict, the officer sent me there, and there's fucking drugs everywhere, so I'm going to indulge, and to a certain extent, I'm not going to put my neck out there and get fucked up. So there's drugs all over the reception center, is what yeah. you're saying? Drugs. Cigarettes, tobacco. Tobacco is illegal in prison as well. There's a lot of contraband it's, you wouldn't expect. We ain't allowed, they're not allowed to have in prison, but they with, get it in there. With the reception center being the place where all the inmates go before they go to their um, final destination, so called, say, would you say that you've seen a lot of problems over there? Was it a chill place? Was, what was going on? Uh, what was the vibe? Uh, no, on the daily there was probably um officer on inmate uh batteries going on. I seen people getting slapped up. Um inmates, by the guards? Yeah, by the guards. I seen other people, inmates just getting smacked up by other inmates, you know. Um I've, I've seen a few stabbings, you know what I'm saying? Even um, at my, um, Miami and South Florida reception center, I seen him wheel a guy out and had just got stabbed up evidently and found in his room. And he was dead, you know what I'm saying? When they wheeled him out on the wheelchair, bro, his head was hanging down like this and they were trying to lift it up, you know what I'm saying? And he, he, he was dead already. What was you know, the first situation that that let you know, oh shit, this is no longer counting. Oh, soon as first quarter, when the officer stepped up in my face and yelled at me and pretty much told me I wasn't nothing, you know what I'm saying? And that, uh, hey, he, you're our property now, boy, pretty much. So yeah, he he scared it into me right there. As soon as I got off the bus, the officer that was there, whoever it was, it was Spanish dude. And he was going off, bro, and he st I watched him smack several people that day. I'm talking about smack them. Ah! So you, you was a little nervous that you was going to be the next one to get smacked up? Yeah. Did you have any problems while you was in the reception center? No. None at all. I was hanging out. I was cool. I was popular. Everybody know me as Chobie. I moved around the pound, did things. 
stay busy, you know, enjoy the programs, you know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, uh, there's, there's all kinds of different hustles and, and stuff in there, you know what I'm saying? What it's kind of hustle were you doing? Well, um, I was, uh, I was like mainly just like, if you needed something, I was the man to come to, you know what I'm saying? Just come holler at me if you need something, like, uh, you know what I'm saying? It don't matter, I help you out, give you directions, show you what's, what's going on. If you're new around there, tell you about the pound. Uh, I might go from this dorm to the next dorm, picking up trash. Like, I pick up the trash every morning, move around the pound. So, if somebody need to pass a message to somebody, to another dorm, I'll be the man, hey bro, what's up, bro? tell someone, so I said, da, 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 da. you know, come on. And I'm like, all right, bro, I'll get back with you. So like, people people always hollering at me, uh, I would volunteer in the kitchen, you know what I'm saying? And work in the kitchen too. And uh, I just, uh, I got up, I felt well, I got by well in there. I, 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 made my, I made my money, just, just, uh, just really off the land, you know what I'm saying? It's just pretty simple. Did, so you didn't have no problems at all, like, because the white boys are outnumbered in prison, correct? Yeah, probably. And you just, the whole time under the low key, under the radar? Yeah, it's low key, bro, under the radar, but at the same time, um, I was right there in it with, with them. I was hanging out right with the gang, with the gang members and the drug dealers, um, and doing doing running for them. I might uh, I might have have to go over all the way across the pound at a certain time and grab something and bring it back back this way, or you know what I'm saying? Go make sure to tell the boys, hey man, check check the um info, whatever you know what I'm saying, but. And that's a, a long, long story short, just like you could make a soup just for, for sweeping up somebody's floor, you know, um, making their bed, you know, um, washing their clothes for them. Uh, you got sewing people's clothes up, you know, you got different things and people making cards in there for their family or drawings, um, tattoos. It's a big hustle in there, you know. You got gambling going on with cars, sports, NFL, everything. There's a lot of stuff that you could get into, you know what I'm saying, in there. Um, and church programs. Um, just, you know, you eat three times a day. They got to feed you. Um, but, you know, the hustles are just, everything's a hustle. Somebody is willing somebody's willing to pay somebody some, something that they don't want to do, that they won't do, that they wouldn't do, they'll pay that somebody else that will do it, you know what I'm saying? So, there would be times, you know what I'm saying, I didn't have no food in my belly and I was hungry, and somebody say, hey, uh, I'll give you a soup if you wash my shirt for me. Oh, yeah, bro, what's up, you got soap? No, I ain't got number. Oh, here, here's a bar of soap, too. You know what I'm saying, just every couple of days, I wash my shirts, right? You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna give up some suits. Alright, that's cool. Huh? What's the craziest thing? What's the craziest you would say you've seen? The craziest thing you've seen? Hmm. I mean, you know, the gangs in there, and there really was a lot of crazy stuff going on. Like I said, I was right in the middle of it, so I was seeing things and hearing things. Well, um, you know, I don't see the homeboys turn on homeboys, tell on each other, stabbing each other. Um, uh, I seen one uh, gang member get, um, you know, beat up by his own gang, you know what I'm saying? And got, you know, X'd out, you know? Um, and this was the person that was supposedly, you know, the image he was portraying was, you know, he was real and you know, but evidently, you know, they didn't approve of them, so. But, What's going through your mind when you're seeing this? Because this is the first time you're seeing stuff like uh, this, right? Yeah. And I'm like, whoa, bro, I thought that guy was a gangster. I thought he was tough, you know what I'm saying? Like, 
what's going on here? I'm like, are they making him leave the dorm? What? He's got to check in, you know what I'm saying? He checked in, you know what I'm saying? Or whatever, you know? Like, like you wouldn't expect, like, there, there's police in there, too, just like there is on the street, you know what I'm saying? People telling, bro, just to tell and be buddy buddy with the with with the officers in there, um, and, and probably like eighty percent of the contraband, ninety percent of the drugs that's in prisons being brought in by the officers. You know, it's it's big money in there. I've never seen cash flow like that ever. You know, what kind of money. cash flow are we talking about? I'm about like. We're talking about from fifty to a hundred dollars for a pack of cigarettes, like two dollars cigarettes. Hundred bucks on a pound. It's like you know, a carton that's a carton that's two thousand dollars, you know what I'm saying? When you left um the detention center, where did you end up? You said Santa Rosa? Yeah, for about three and a half years. Yeah, and that was gangland. That's why I say and talk about it so much because that's where it was. I was at a low custody um, inmate. Really didn't have no bad charges, no nothing like that. And I got sent up there way far away from here, away from my family, you know. Made me feel it, you know. It don't matter where you go, even though, you know, you may not get visits or whatever, you still... When you're that far away from home, bro, you, it gives you a, a sense of, man, you know, I'm, I'm being punished here. This is it. So, that place is, is, is rough. It's a rough camp. Did you have a girlfriend on the outside while you going, when you went up the road? Uh, for the first couple of years, yes. She rode with me. And then after the first couple of years, and then she just uh, fell off, you know what I'm saying? Ended up, before I got out, she had got pregnant and uh, with another, you know what I'm saying? So, that's how that went down. But I wasn't, you know, I wasn't crushed about it, you know what I'm saying? Like, really, I didn't expect her to be there when I got out. Anyways, that was, that was for the five, when I got sentenced to five years. What about your homeboys? How many of your homeboys can you say stayed in and kept riding while you was locked up? Probably about four or five. That's a good number. That's more than what I expected, to be honest. Yeah. That's more than I expected. Well, I had a good support system back then, actually. Friends, a couple female friends, a couple male friends, you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Always writing me. Send me money, tell me to keep my head up. You know what I'm saying? We're waiting on you to get out. So, it's like I always had something to come back home to, you know. I had people that love me, you know, which a lot of people don't have that. What kind of programs did they have for y'all at Santa Rosa? Um, they had a CDL class. They had... Um, they had several drug NAA classes. Um, they had probably a GED program. They had a good program in that sense. Did you take any of the rehab classes? Mm, no, uh, not none of those. I I, I didn't. Um, I was working. I was at the work camp after a little while, so when I went to the work camp, they just had me working every day. I didn't have time to go to class. What's the craziest thing you've seen in Santa Rosa? Uh, man. I guess uh, we were doing they were doing a shakedown one time, and uh, so shakedown the search when they come in and search the dorm, everybody had to line up in their boxers, and when when you line up in your boxers, they got this big wand and they scan your butt with it and your body, 
scan you, see if you got metal in you, you know, cell phone. Well, uh, the guy in front of me, if this is the, the wand goes off, beep beep. Like, whoa, hey, we got a winner here. He's like, well, what you got up there, you know? And uh, evidently, you know, they made him go in the bathroom and get it out. And it was a cell phone, you know what I'm saying? A little small, tiny cell phone. What happened to him? He, he left the dorm in handcuffs. They came and got all his stuff and everything. We thought he was gone, going to jail for like two or three hours. He comes back in the dorm with his stuff and everything. He goes right back to the same bed. I'm like, well, what's going on there? God gave me a walk-in DR or something. So, I'm like, okay, well, I guess, you know, we were all kind of leery of him, but this dude was in there. He was, uh, he was a, he was a, um, big dope boy. He was a big gang member, so we didn't think nothing of it. But, he was he was actually working, you know what I'm saying? He ended up telling on the person, you know what I'm saying, that was bringing in the stuff to him. And um, he got, he worked for him, got the person set up, and then he got up out of there, you know what I'm saying? And they transferred him to a location where he could get away from the, the people that, before he got, you know, hurt for telling, because... You know, you don't tell um, in prison, you know, you don't snitch on nobody. You mind your own business, you know what I'm saying? Um, like, for real, you know, and you don't steal, you know. You don't steal. Who would you say has it the worst in prison? Has it the worst? Well, there are, I guess, a stereotypical thing would be, you know, um, a little, the little white boy, young white boy that's, you know, uh, put immature and pretty much, you know, scared, doesn't know the ropes, never been there before, um, and is looking for somebody, you know, to guide him, put him under his wing, you know. So, so that person's real, you know, real opening their self up for a lot of, a lot of things that might look like they're good, but they might end up being bad, you know? Was you housed with any child molesters and rapists? Oh yeah, definitely. What's their everyday living like? Do they have it rough in there? Or do they just carry on like every Sometimes, other sometimes, depending on where they're at and where, who knows what their charges are, you know? Um, once. Once people find that out and the right person, you know, it could be any old day, you know, the right person find that out and they're just going to take it out on them because child molesters is a bad person, and especially in prison, you know, so sometimes they handle that. Sometimes they, they live okay. It just Did you get any DRs when you was in there the first time? Uh, no. Okay. So you basically had smooth sailings the first time around. Yeah, man. All right, so tell us about when you first come home the first time. Tell us about that day you about to be in release. I'll be released? Okay. The first time. First time. All right, well, uh, I'm happy. I'm excited. But, uh. I made it through prison so much, you know, it was cool, it was straight, I, I, I enjoyed myself, like, I didn't, it wasn't really like a punishment, you know what I'm saying, it was more like a vacation, so I just got out, had every, all my plans, everything prepared, and when I got out, I was going to go straight to my plug and, and get some dope, and I was going to do my thing, you know what I'm saying, and that's what I did. So that was the plan before you even left the camp. <laughs> <laughs> Straight up, that's what I did, you know what I'm saying? But, yeah, uh, it, it, that ended up being bad, though, because it, it only lasted nine months. I caught a fresh sale case, and I was right back in the system. Did it feel like it was worth it at the moment? Uh, 
yeah and no it was it was for to live a lifestyle of you know uh, of different luxuries you know what I'm saying well, it's what you think you gotta have you know but in the long run it wasn't worth it no alright so when we get back locked up after the nine months how long did we end up doing after that one uh uh, I caught a five-year sentence, and uh, because it was directly for the same thing that I they had just sent me to prison for, same exact thing, sale, sale of controlled substance. So they say, man, we want to give you twelve years. And now, a word from our sponsors. You tried the rest, now come taste the best Big Chubby Barbecue and Southern Flavors. Man, it's going down this weekend, man. Y'all already know, man, we're at the big old flea market. The Spanish flea market. That's what they told me to call it. The Spanish flea market. <laughs> Anywho, man, you know what's going on in the major way, man. You already know how we're doing it, man. We're going to have them ribs on deck, pulled pork, smoked chicken wings, sausages, pork steaks, uh, yellow rice, green beans, baked beans, corn on the cob, man. Y'all already know, man. Y'all already know all meals come with a drink. You know how we doing it, man. It's Big Choby, baby. We're doing it in a major way. So y'all come holler at your boy this weekend, man. The big old flea market, man. The Spanish flea market. Come get at me. It's your boy, Big Choby, and I'm holler at you. So they try to give you 12 years? 12 years because there's like, man, you're, you're a drug dealer. You know what I'm saying? We don't play about that. And you're in Okeechobee. We don't play about that. Like, you're the worst of the worst, you know. You, these children are here. This is a senior citizen retirement community, laid back, and we don't want drug dealers here. So you're going to keep continuing doing in this. This is what we're going to do to you. So it was like that for a while. That was the offer, you know what I'm saying? So one day, then they came at me with the five-year offer. I jumped on it. I was ready to go, uh, ready to go to prison. I had already been to prison once. I was ready to go back. Screw it, man. I only give me five years. I got off on them. Let's go get this over with so I can get back out and get back to living life again. Okay. So when we on that second bus ride back to prison, there's no jitters this time, is there? Like since you know what to expect, you you're uh, more you're more ready to get back to the situation, or are you still scared? And actually, actually no, I'm still kind of like in my mind because I caught I got I still got about like four years to do, and in my mind I'm thinking, man, I don't want to do this four years alone. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully the people gonna ride with me that I got on my side gonna ride with me. Um, I'm worried about where I'm gonna go, what prison I'm gonna be at and start my time where I can officially start my time, start living my life, and try to um, adjust to the prison life. So what reception center did we end up this time? Oh, my second time? Yeah. Uh, we went to Orlando Reception Center, Central Florida. Did you see any of the same uh, CEOs or any of the inmates you seen the first time? Yeah, same. Yeah, I've seen some of the same ones, and I've seen the same one that was smacking people up last time I was there. He was still smacking people. And changed none. It was the same rodeo, same exact thing. So how are you maneuvering around this time on the second go-around? maneuvering go around the second time. Go in, I'm thinking, I already know how to make money. I know the, the ropes, so... I get hungry, I can, if I ain't got no money on my car, I can, I can hustle. So, first thing I'm thinking when I go in there, all right, just be observant. Look for a certain situation, open up, take advantage of it, you know what I'm saying? Um, closed mouths don't eat, you feel me? So, either you can sit back, either you can sit back, dog, and play cards, watch TV, Gamble, talk on the phone, whatever. Smoke drugs, get high. Um, 
you know, either, you know, you can do that, but the end of the day, you know, you're doing your time. Everybody does their time differently, so you can't tell somebody else how to do their time. But I made, I had a good time. Uh, the first, second time through the reception center, I, 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 I made it through and um, made it to the main, my main permanent camp. You know? Which was what? Uh, Liberty. Okay, I've heard about Liberty. So tell me about your experience at Liberty. Liberty was okay. It was kind of actually laid back. Uh, as in though there was gangs there. And, um, I was in an open bay dorm, which is like 71 beds going all the way around the room and in the center. Well, so everybody's sleeping next to each other. It's just open. So, on one side of me, I have a a um, a blood, and he's got thirty years sentence. It's next to me, right here, I got a, a guy. He's what you call a Zo Haitian Zo Mafia. He's got fifteen years. You know what I'm saying? And here I am, a white guy in prison, who probably one out of twenty white guys in the 70 man dorm. I'm not affiliated with no gang and I got like two years and for or I got like three years left in prison, you know what I'm saying? And you got me sleeping with this in the middle of a guy that could stab me in my sleep. What's going on? Did he end up being a cool person? Yeah, both of them ended up being cool people and um, you know. They looked out for me, and when it was, you know, my time to go, they were sad, you know, but hey, they would eat, eat with me, hook me up with stuff, uh, just look out for me, you know what I'm saying, and yeah, I, don't, I mean, I got along well with everybody, which that's the thing, it's all about how you carry yourself, you know. Would you say you met more good people in prison than bad people? Um, it sounded like you was hanging out having a good old time. No, I met, no, I wouldn't say I met more good people, man, no. So I met a lot of bad people. I met a lot of bad people that I thought were good at first, man. What made them That's bad? The thing. What made them bad? That, well, after you see somebody's true colors, you know what I'm saying? See what, then you know what somebody's about. But you don't want to judge a book by its cover, you know what I'm saying? Because you're in prison with somebody, hey, don't make them a bad person, you feel me? Yeah. So you're going to sit back. And observe, bro, and you'll see. You, you when you're living with somebody else, bro, twenty four seven, you can't get away from that person. You get to know a motherfucker real well, real well. <laughs> what kind of what kind of characters were you coming across in that guy? I know there's oh, a lot of fucking all kinds of characters. You got con artists, you got doctors, ph pharmacists, lawyers. Um, Police, uh, military guys, you got uh, millionaires, rappers, you got all kinds of different characters in there, football players, you got different people come to prison to, you know what I'm saying, that they ain't did nothing that bad, but hey, they sent them to prison, you know, um, they may have made a small mistake, but it's, it's the thing, it's just a character, wild world, wild world in there. <clears throat> so Liberty City, as far as gangs, there was more gangs there than Santa Rosa or no? Uh, probably about the same. What about, um, what is it, Friday Friday Fight Nights? Friday Fight Night, yeah. That's something uh, more predominant in the JIT camps now, where they file, um, throw na your names in the hat. Everybody draw a name in a hat and it's you know, you're bumping, you know what I'm saying? Oh, you yeah. was in a JIT camp too? I would never went to JIT camp, but okay. that's what they do. Okay, so you ain't have to go through none of that? Nah. So what y'all did when y'all got bored and, and up the road? Man. Because that was the entertainment from what I heard was Friday Night Fights. So what was your entertainment? Well, they, they got, like I said, you got a television to watch in there. 
You got a telephone. You got tablets where you can play the game. Um, oh, yeah, y'all yeah, got the tablets now. I forgot y'all got the tablets. How many problems did that cause? Um, it's starting to cause problems now with people selling their tablets, people stealing them, breaking them, uh, using them as weapons. Uh, just, but it's good. It's good though. You know, it's a good thing for us in prison going from how hard it used to be to get a hold of your family. Now you got a tablet where you can just message them directly and they can message you back, you know? Pretty so, nice. So it's not too much on the the regular telephones they got in the dorm no more. It's more tablet action going on there. Yeah. Anything. Yeah, more tablet action, definitely. Mm -hmm. So what was your daily routine like inside of prison? Uh, my daily routine, I say uh, I wake up with a hustler mentality, try to find out what I'm going to do today, make some money, you know what I'm saying? How I'm going to eat tonight. Describe your primary hustle inside of the prison. Uh, describe it, I say, you know, I was just pretty much hustling and moving, uh, cleaning stuff up, uh, picking up trash across the pound, being in the, um, I mainly work in, in and out the kitchen and uh, pick up trash and take it to the kitchen. Well, so I'll go in the kitchen and uh, some of the guys might have some sandwiches back there. Hey, bro, I got some cheeseburgers. Dollar a piece here, but boom, 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 strap me up like 10 of them. I walk back to the dorm, sell them for $2 a piece, $3 a piece. Boom, now I come back, give, it, give the guy his $10, and I got 20 bucks. Boom. I'm eating for the, for a couple of days off that, you know what I'm saying? Or it might be, hey, bro, I got a package I need you to pick up from over there. I'm going to break you off because they know I move I move around the pound. I got, I got the pass to move around. They can't move like me because they're not allowed, you know. So I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm a little stone right there that I can, I can make some money. Hey, so they might cut me off, off something for, for picking it up and bringing it to me. Hey, I'm gonna do it. They're not looking at me crazy because I'm, I'm, I'm blending in. I'm white, young white boy. I don't have no markings, no bad tattoos. I look bad. And I work in the kitchen and the officers see me every day doing this. I don't look out of place. Hey. How would you describe the mannerisms of the officers? Uh, they're, they're all right, kind of, uh, some of them would be really uh, uptight and be police as police as fuck and or police as officers. I mean, so um, but a lot of them would be charismatic and not care, you know, and not take it so serious because at the end of the day, you know, we're already being punished, so they wouldn't. They know that hey, we're not gonna try to make their lives that much harder. And those those were the officers, you know, that would 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 let you, you know, get away with things. What's your worst encounter with an officer? Uh, well, uh, one one day, it was a couple of days before I was going home. Actually, officer, he had a bad bad attitude ever since day one when I first got there, and he had caught me out in the morning outside the dorm doing something I wasn't supposed to be doing. Well, he, he he snapped on me and everything. I pretty much told him I didn't care, you know what I'm saying, that he couldn't do nothing to me, that I was going home. He pulled me off to the side, yelling at me like he was about to hit me, and told me that he would wait for me out of the parking lot for when I got out. Did that shake you up? Not really, bro. It kind of amped me up. Actually, I was like, what? You going to wait for me out of the parking lot? All right, all right, whatever. And, um, but, yeah, it kind of, you know, it kind of got to me a little bit. It kind of got under my skin a little bit. But I knew I was going home anyway, so I was just like, whatever. 
But other than that, encounter with officer, no, nah, nothing. This second time now, towards the end of it, are we starting to make any kind of change to really get ready to be released, or are we still on the same shit? Uh, no, not really. I done, yeah, I done worked on myself a little bit there, and uh, but in the back of my mind, I still uh, don't want to give up that lifestyle yet, and I'm, 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 it's nothing. Like I said, they only gave me five years, so I was, I know, they were trying to give me 12, so I, I feel like I really skated. And uh, So you felt like you got over? Uh, yeah, I felt like I got over. And I was indulging in drug use, and, and the buying and selling of the drugs while in prison. So when I got out, I, I was on that same, I, wasn't, I didn't prepare myself at all that time either. What's the most expensive drug in jail? Um, probably. I would say, um, probably what they call Molly. How much would that run in? Run you probably like. Probably like a hundred dollars a gram, or no, probably about two hundred a gram. What happens to that to the people that that like to take these drugs, but don't have the money to pay for them? Well, these people that take out fronts and stuff up. like they get fucked up bad. And, um, they could get beat up, stabbed, killed. Uh, and extorted for even more money until they pay that money and plus you're going to pay more money, whatever, you don't, but it happens. Did and you then, ever go through something like that? No, no, because uh, I knew what I was capable of paying and what my family and friends that had sent me the money was capable of paying and that they would absolutely pay the money for me. I would never that bad bad off where I would, would fuck myself. Put myself in a position like that. No. So what kind of shit did you personally see like with people tweaking out and stuff? What was the craziest situation uh, you seen while somebody was tweaking? Alright, two homeboys been up tweaking for about three or four days on Molly. They've been up, no sleep now, and they've been putting it in their cigarettes and smoking it nonstop. So they get to fighting about something. And I know they got a cell phone and they're homeboys and they're fighting, yelling about something. And then one of them, they start fighting, grab a broomstick. The broomstick broke. Well, he had stabbed his homeboy with a broomstick, you know what I'm saying? And uh, the cops came and everything, took them up out of there and all, you know. And it was like, bro, they hung out every day together, ate together, chilled, talked on the phone together, did everything together. Had the three nights of being up together and that's what happened. One of them stabbed the other one. That was, that was wild, though. That was wild. What about K2? Are they tweaking real bad on Oh K2? yeah, K two is big thing in there. Um, you know, K two is big. They they're uh, gooking out and they're dropping like flies. Some people is killing people, you know what I'm saying? Some people don't come back. Some people die and quit breathing, don't come back. Some people do. Uh sometimes it's a mild high, it might just get you a little high and don't do all that. Then depending on what that they're spraying on it. It's, they're spraying all kinds of stuff on that stuff and making this drug out of it now, you know? And it's bad. Okay, well, you said you just got out recently, yeah. right? Yeah. Would you say this time is different than the last two times? Yeah, because this time when I got out, I didn't have what I had last two times the support system and friend, good friends that help me when I come out. So now it's like everything, I'm, I'm feeling the hurt now 
more than ever and re realizing the error of my ways, you know, that, hey, that all that getting in trouble and living how I was living, bro, now, now look at me, you know? So it took three times for me to really now want to change. So what did you learn about yourself this last time? That I guess that it's all right just to be, you know, Brian, you know what I'm saying? And, and not have to want to be the guy that everybody calls to wanting something or, uh, you know, want to be the man making money, you know? It's okay to not, not have all that uh, cash and jewelry, and cars. It's okay to just fall back, you know? That's what I learned, you know? Would you say you was just as addicted to the lifestyle and the money as the people were addicted to the drugs they were using? Yeah. Would you say the lifestyle was more addictive than the drugs? Because yeah. you were using the drugs as well. Yeah, because at the time, you... In the lifestyle you're living, you're not, you're, you're, you're so blind to everything that you're doing because you're just so used to doing it. You're just, all right, hotel room, boom, boom, strip club, girls, liquor, hotel, boom. It's nothing, you know what I'm saying? But it's an addiction, you know, and they're addicted. But at the same time, um, you don't, you don't look at it like that because you just, it's fast money. It's the way of life. Okay, so you said this time was different because you didn't have the support system. Yeah. But you also said you didn't want to get in no more trouble. So why would you not want to stop getting in trouble when you had the support system as opposed to... Uh, I, I, I don't know. In trouble because... The support system is no longer around. Because it's... uh. It's always a, I guess you having a safety blanket or cushion, kind of, so to say, you know. Um, once you lose that, you know, you ain't got that no more. Uh, going back to prison, you know what I'm saying? You might have a rougher time, you know, not having nobody ride with you, shit like that. If you could make any changes to the prison system, what would it be? Uh, Anything I, you want? I would make it. I would make it easier for your family to um, send you food and gifts and look out for you while you're in there instead of them charging you, you know, 75 cents, a dollar for a ramen noodle soup. You know, let your family send you some, some, some food in there. That's good. What up? Uh, Give me two more. Two more. Uh... But put in a good work program where they train you and teach you skills, how to, you know, work in the free world. One more. Uh, I'd say just more, more, uh, more better, more betterment programs in there more letting um, volunteers come in to uh, educate people and do seminars and be able to earn certificates saying, hey, I completed uh, something in this course, you know what I'm saying? Make, you know, feel better about yourself even though you're in prison. That's important. You need to feel good about yourself, you know? Yeah, that's, that is important to feel good about yourself. What would you tell 15-year-old Brian Right now, if you can see man. 15 year old Brian, what would you I'd tell him? I'd say, man. Nah, I don't, don't even, you know what I'm saying? Don't even, drugs ain't cool, you know? Don't even try to be that guy, man. Go the other way, man. You know what I'm saying? Play basketball, make you do music, you know, you always like music. What, a, um, you know what I'm saying? I would try to steer him away from that that lifestyle, you know, so much around me, it probably would have been hard. I got away from it here, but over here, you know, you know it probably would have been hard, but out of all, everybody and all my friends, it seemed like I was the only one that really stepped up and was like, 
hey, you got some money, you got some money, I got some money. Let's pull all our money together and get some. You know what I'm saying? Like, so everybody looked at me to to do that. Also, from a young age on, I just wanted that's who I was, was, you know. So I tell them, hey man, don't do that. Leave the drugs alone. Do something else with your life. Is there anything or any stories you would like to say before we end? Like, because I know I asked you a few questions, but is there something like you, you feel like you need to get off your chest? No. No. Other than, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, just live every day like you last. You know what I'm saying? Um, love, love the ones close to you, you know what I'm saying? And your family. Let them know you love them because uh, you never know when you're going to go, you know what I'm saying? And uh, things happen in, in this life where people lose sight of one another, you know? Sometimes you got to go back and remind each other who you are, you know? That's it. The game's over, it's a wrap. Mummy's closing, I'm addicted to them stacks. Money folding, crews controlling, cops patrolling. If the flashing light's strobing, I'm gone, I'm old, they rolling. Me and Big Johnny dead, being loathing. They say it's witchery the way a nigga mix a potion. I see the victory the way I put the plays in motion. I love history, they prayers, see my pocket motion. There's no mystery, these streets high scolding. Don't conversate with niggas, cause it's.